Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 20 through 31, and the King James text today reads, Declare this in the house of Jacob. Excuse me, in the house yeah, of Jacob. And publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord? Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound or the boundaries of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, Yet can they not pass over it. But this people hath a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God, that giveth rain, both the former and the latter, in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. You remember what I said? You cannot do things contrary to God's way and expect a good return. That's exactly what God just said. I'm going to repeat verse 25. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. Verse 26. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that setteth snares. They set a trap, they catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great and waxen rich. I've got to throw this in. Think Mega preachers. Think television preachers. Think mega churches. Their houses are full of deceit, therefore they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat, verse 28. They shine, yea, they overpass. The deeds of the wicked, they judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. And the right of the needy do they not judge. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. In other words, not by God's means. The priests bear rule by their own means. They're using their own methods. They're using their own ideas. And look at the next phrase. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? 
I want you to understand something today. There's no such thing as bad apples in the kingdom of God. Word that I just read to you from Jeremiah chapter 5 verses 20 through 31 was the word that God gave Jeremiah for the nation of Israel. And I've got news for you today. That word the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, that exact word is today applicable to America. Today, every word that I've read to you from Jeremiah 5, verses 20 through 31 speaks to the condition and the circumstances surrounding the state of our nation. We've got preachers and leaders in the church who have become rich beyond imagination and they fill their churches using nothing but deceit and lies. My Lord have mercy. They've entrapped people's souls. The word of God says, as we read today, it's like a cage full of birds. They've been trapped. These people have been trapped. And the word that I read to you today says that the priests, the leaders, those who were meant to administer the law of God are approaching things in their own way. They're doing things their own way. But here's the real kick in the pants. And the people love to have it so. Did you hear what I said? Yep. The Word of God said in the last days, listen to me, they would heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears. So that doesn't mean teachers would come on the scene who were preaching messages that tickled your ears. No, 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 no. That literally means that it, was, it would grow from the ground up. That the people would heap unto themselves teachers. What does that mean? It means the people are elevating the leaders who are doing things their own way. The people are elevating preachers who are preaching a carnal message. The people are elevating preachers who are teaching and preaching a message that is entirely opposite to everything that God would have us to know and to understand. We've got some stuff going on in the church world today that is absolutely mind-boggling. If you'd have asked me 30, 40 years ago as a young man, a young preacher, if I believed that half the preachers I know today uh, from years gone by would fall victim to the Trumpian Republican movement, I would have told you then, Raphael, that you were out of your mind. Yeah. That no such movement could ever deceive Christians that I knew, and believers and churches and pastors that I knew, and yet today these people are getting up in their pulpits and they are defending and all but falling to their knees and raising their hands in worship to one of the most evil men that has ever occupied the White House in the United States of America. Today we have articles appearing in publications in the Christian Post politics section. Friday, May 31st, 2019. The headline read, Franklin Graham, Trump's enemies will hurt America, could spark civil war if impeached. The Patheos website published an article January 16, 2017 by Bethany Blankley. The headline reads, 49 years after MLK, Christian pastors call for arms, guns, and prayer are necessary. The Hill published an article by Josh Delk, August 29, 2017, the headline of which read, Televangelist 
Jim Baker, Christians will start a civil war if Trump is impeached. The article begins televis a televangelist Jim Baker is predicting that Christians would begin a second civil war in the U.S. if President Trump were impeached. Quote, if it happens, there will be a civil war in the United States of America. Listen to this garbage. The Christians, he continues, will finally come out of the shadows because we are going to be shut up permanently if we're not careful, end quote. He said on the Jim Baker show in a clip highlighted by Right Wing Watch, the Southern Poverty Law Center on January 3rd of this year published an article, the headline of which reads, The Framer of a Far-Right Survivalist Movement in the Pacific Northwest rang in the new year by warning of religious civil war. The article begins, James Wesley Rawls, a former U.S. Army intelligence officer and self-described religious separatist, who once called Islam a religion of evil and death, thinks a war of worldviews may come as early as 2020. And he's urging his readers to strategically relocate inland to red states. The Right Wing Watch published an article by Kyle Mantilla, 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 September 3rd, 2019, the most recent. The headline reads, Rick Joyner, this is a major Christian figure, Christians need to establish militias in preparation for the coming Civil War. The article begins by reading, Right-wing pastor Rick Joyner appeared on the Jim Baker Show today where he urged conservative Christians to begin to form militias in preparation for a coming civil war. For over a year, Joyner has been claiming that God gave him a vision in which he claims to have been shown that it is inevitable that America will undergo a second American revolution slash civil war. On today's program, Joyner told Baker that he believes the catalyst for this conflict will come when the government implements gun control policies and begins to attempt to confiscate weapons. This is a major Christian pastor in America telling Christians they need to take up arms and begin to form militias to prepare for the coming civil war. Folks, what I read to you today from Jeremiah is true for America today, and this is not my opinion. I declare that this afternoon as a prophetic word from God, thus saith the Lord. Making it perfectly clear. What I read to you from Jeremiah 5, 20 through 31, the Holy Ghost would declare to you today, this is a word. It was a word for Israel at that time. However, it is today a word for America. Are you understanding what I'm saying? For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that setteth snares. They set traps. They catch men. As the cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great. Notice that these deceitful men that the Lord speaks of within His people, they're not 
little characters off in the corner somewhere that nobody knows about and nobody hears from and nobody knows who they are. No, they've become great. These are men of great renown. These are men who are well known. Listen. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat. They shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless. Yet they prosper, and the right of the needy do they not judge? This is what's happening in America today. I don't think any thinking believer needs me to expound upon the policies that we have seen go into effect over the last two and a half years. I don't think you need me to explain the caging uh, separation of children from their parents. People who have come to this country seeking help because their lives were in danger in the nations from which they came. And the help we gave them was tearing their children out of their arms and putting them in cages like animals. Do you really need me to expound upon the truth of what God is saying to the church today? Do you really need me to expound upon this? Second Peter 2, 1 through 3, I've got to move quickly today. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that bought them. And listen, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. Um, isn't that what we read? The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Never in our history of the world has Christianity been looked upon with a more negative, nasty view than it is today, except maybe during the Inquisitions and the, that sort of thing. Verse 3, 2 Peter 2, And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. How do you make merchandise of people? In other words, you make something available for sale. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you give me what I want, I'll deliver these people to you. You give me what I want, I'll make sure these people vote for you. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? That is exactly what Peter's talking about in 2 Peter 2. Make merchandise with Feigned words make merchandise of you. Listen now, you've got to, you've got to pay attention. Don't ever read the Word of God uh, carelessly. Line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Uh, study to show thyself approved unto God a work when it needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the Word of Truth. God ain't done talking yet. He then goes on, Peter then goes on to say, Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. What is he saying? He's saying it may seem like their judgment is taking a while getting here, but guess what? It's not near as far off as you think it is. I told you from the Lord, thus saith the Lord, you cannot do things contrary to my way and expect a good result. You cannot do unholy things. Woo! 
glory. You cannot do ungodly things. You cannot do unholy things. You cannot do wicked and evil things and claim to represent me, saith the Lord. Yeah. Because I will judge you. I will call you into account immediately. Your prosperity will be short-lived. Got news for you folks. We got people in America, we got Christians in America talking about taking up weapons in order to carry out another civil war. I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost showed me a very long time ago. This isn't something new. This is something the Lord showed me. He said, uh, they're going to lose, and they're going to lose big. And when they've lost, they are going to bring down upon the church. See, you've got to understand something, folks. There's a reason why it's a good idea to have a separation between church and state. Mm -hmm. There's a very good reason why you keep church and state separate. See, a lot of people, when I say that these nuts are going to lose and they're going to lose big, a lot of people start to cheer and they say, Oh, yay, hallelujah, they're going to lose. Um, no. No. It's not something to cheer about, I'll tell you why. Because their loss is the church's loss. You say, well, what do you mean by that? I mean that their loss politically is also going to affect the church spiritually. Mm -hmm. Expound further, Pastor, I don't quite understand. They're going to lose their political effort to dominate and control America, but I'll tell you what else they're going to cause. They're going to cause the greatest level of persecution on the Christian church that the world has ever seen. I've got news for you. I'm LGBT. I'm affirming. But we're still part of the church. Mm -hmm. You know that persecution? We're going to feel it too. Do you hear what I'm telling you today? We're going to wind up experiencing all the negativity that these foolish and carnal people are going to unleash upon the church. Are you following what I'm trying to say today? This is why the church ought to stay out of politics. That way, what happens in politics happens in politics. And it does not have a residual impact upon the church. Do you follow what I'm trying to tell you today? But when you try to mingle the two, when you try to bring the two together, honey, oh, you're going to create problems. Because if you lose the political battle, then you've also lost for the church. So Peter said exactly what God said in Jeremiah chapter 5. That there would be false teachers. There would be false preachers and false prophets. Oh, but you know, there are so many preachers in our world today. They see what's going on. They have enough sense to know, Bill and Johnny, that things are not right. But by the same token, they are whips and cowards and fools. Oh, I'm going to say it today. Y'all don't mind. You know me. And they refuse to call out the wicked among us. Mm -hmm. How many times have you heard someone try to explain away a false prophet or a false teacher by simply saying, Oh, you know, he's just a bad apple. No, there are no bad apples in the kingdom of God. There are no bad apples in the church of the living God. Bad apples are false prophets. Bad apples are false teachers. Bad apples are wicked and evil men. They are not part of the kingdom of God. God doesn't have bad apples in His kingdom. Do you hear what I'm telling you today? God does not have bad fruit in His church. That's why the Spirit of the Lord spoke to us last Sunday and said, I'm in the process of shaking the tree. <laughs> That's what the Holy Ghost said. I'm shaking the tree. You know what happens if you shake a tree? Honey, all the bad fruit is going to fall off first. Hello now. Because anything that's rotting, anything that isn't 
really connected to the vine in a healthy way is going to shake loose and drop to the ground. I remember as a kid delivering newspapers in southern New England. <laughs> And one of our neighbors that I delivered newspaper, and I used to have to go up to their front porch, you know, and drop the newspaper on the front. Well, let me tell you, it, it's, not like, it's not like Texas where I come from. When I say you got to go from the road up to their front porch, I mean, you, you're looking at, you know, 75, 80 feet. You're not looking at this stuff like here in Texas where it's a, a little 25-foot walk, you know. It is a level. You got to go uphill half the time because houses are built up onto the mountainsides and up onto the hillsides. And this one neighbor, their house set up on the hillside, and they had all these apple trees outside in front of their house. And I went up to deliver their newspaper, and with every step I took, Tommy, every step I took, I told my mother later that day, I said, every step I took, I was making applesauce. Because everywhere I step, I'm stepping on all these apples. But you want to know what's funny? The tree was full of apples. Why were those apples on the ground? Why were there apples down there beneath my feet for me to walk on? I'll tell you why. Because they were not healthy. Because those were the bad apples. Those are the ones, Johnny, that somehow or another were not properly connected to the vine. And all it took was a good wind and that branch would move a little bit and those bad apples would fall off the tree to the ground and there they were for me to walk on. And if you look at a lot of those apples on the ground, there was not one healthy apple on the ground <coughs> underneath my feet. There was not one apple that I could step on that wouldn't just smush and turn into applesauce. There wasn't one apple down there that if you begin to cut them open, you wouldn't find worms inside of a lot of those apples. There wasn't a healthy apple, Tommy, in the bunch. Because healthy apples don't easily fall from the tree. Healthy apples have to be yanked from the tree. They have to be pulled. Am I telling the truth? Uh -huh. they got to be pulled from the tree. Or if you're going to get a healthy apple to fall from the tree by shaking the tree, you're going to have to shake that tree awful hard. But it doesn't take as much shaking to get an unhealthy apple to fall. Matthew 7, 13 through 20, the word of the Lord reads, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Well, that's funny because the Word of God said that many will follow their pernicious ways. Isn't that what he said in 2 Peter 2? He said, many shall follow their pernicious ways. In Matthew, the Lord said... Wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in there. The majority are happy to go down the path that leads to destruction. Why? Verse 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now listen. The Lord just talked about the straight and narrow way, right? Look at the... I, I'm constantly talking to our church and teaching. you got to keep things in context. Look at the very next phrase. Beware of false prophets! Mm -hmm. What does that tell you? It tells you the Lord is saying there's a wide way that leads to destruction. There's a narrow way that leads to life. Beware of false prophets. What does that tell you? Say so you better watch out who you're listening to. Because not all the prophets are from God. Not all the ones are going to try to help you find the straight and narrow way. Am I telling the truth today? Yes. Let's continue. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs 
of thistles. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. There's no such thing as bad apples in God's church. Don't you tell me when somebody's acting completely contrary to everything God says and everything the Lord taught us, don't you tell me he's just a bad apple. Don't you tell me, well, he's part of the church, but he just ain't acting right. No, there are no bad apples in God's church. There are false prophets, there are false teachers, there are false brethren, but there are no bad apples. And why is this important to understand today? You'll understand momentarily. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Folks, Christians are not identified by people who confess Jesus Christ. That does not make you a Christian. But a Christian will confess Jesus Christ. But simply confessing Christ does not make you a follower of Christ. It doesn't make you ready for heaven. It doesn't make you part of the kingdom of God. These bad apples, they may say, I'm a follower of Christ. They may say, I'm a preacher of the gospel. They may say, I represent God. I speak for the Lord. That does not mean they're going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because there are no bad apples in the kingdom of God. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. It's not about what you say, it's about what you do. Are you living like a believer? Are you living like you believe this thing? Are you living like the Lord taught us to do things a certain way and that's the way they ought to be done? Or are you doing things your own way? Are you following your own path? Are you trying to... Uh, accomplish a good end by your own means and expecting that you're going to be successful. It's a dangerous place to be. In context, the Lord immediately follows His thoughts on the straight and narrow way that leads to eternal life with a dissertation on the need for believers to be on the lookout for false prophets. False prophets like those spoken of in Jeremiah 5 and 2 Peter chapter 2 will try to lead the saints down a carnal path that is contrary to the mandates, commandments, and teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 5 verses 17 through 25. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now listen, verse 19, Galatians 5. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. There are no bad apples in the kingdom of God. You can't be doing these things 
and say, oh, well, I'm part of God's kingdom. I'm just not quite doing the way I ought to be doing. No, no, there are no bad apples in the kingdom of God. How do you know a prophet, whether they're a true prophet or a false prophet? The Lord said, by their fruit. Now, I know a lot of people crack me up because they'll then turn around and they'll try to tell you what the Lord meant by you can tell them by their fruit. Uh, no, 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 no. I can tell you what the Lord meant by their fruit. You shall know them because the Word of God tells us what fruit to look for. See, I don't manufacture what that term fruit means. The Word of God tells us what to look for. <coughs> Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness. Meekness means self-control. Temperance, which is in essence sobriety. Not sobriety necessarily in terms of alcohol, but just being sober-minded, you know, being clear-headed. Against such there is no law. In other words, you do things God's way. There ain't a law in the universe that, that tells you you can't live God's way. There ain't a law in the world that says you cannot be loving. There isn't a law in the world that says that you cannot have peace. There isn't a law in the world that says that you cannot have joy. There is not a law in the world that says you cannot be gentle. There is not a law in the world that says you cannot be good. There isn't a law in the world that says you can't be long-suffering or patient. Am I telling the truth? Do you follow what I'm trying to say today? Mm -hmm. God's way... The straight and narrow may not be easy. It often requires that we follow very specific and narrow guidelines. You say, Pastor, what do you mean by that? Well, listen, here's some examples. Hebrews 12, 14, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. It's not always easy to follow peace with all men. I've had people get in front of me at Walmart mm -hmm. and start acting the fool. And I would try to shut things down and get, you know, and get the argument over and move on. And that person just kept going. He Am I right, Tommy? Oh, yeah. Kept going and kept going and kept going. And you ever been there? But the Bible said, follow peace with all men. I was trying, but they sure weren't going to let me. God's way isn't always easy. Listen, 1 Thessalonians 5, 14 through 15. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. But ever follow that which is good. Oh, but that only applies amongst believers. That only applies to folks within the church. Uh, no, keep reading. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. So no... That is not something that applies to us as believers as it relates to our relationships with other believers. No, he said, among ourselves and to all men. God's way in and always easy. Listen, Matthew 26, 51 through 53. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword. When the soldiers came to collect Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane to take him for judgment. One of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck one of the high priests and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. See, Jesus understood God's way isn't always easy, but it's the right way to go. Am I telling the truth? Mm -hmm. He said, no. 
that's not my way. You don't, you don't take up arms against those who come for you. Hello now. But that's the very thing we have preachers telling Christians in America today they ought to be doing. Am I telling the truth? Jesus said they that take up the sword are going to die by the sword. Listen to what the Lord then says. He said, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? Christian, I got news for you. If they're coming for you and the Lord and God allows them to take you, then it's the will of God that you be taken. Are you hearing me now? Oh, but I may be martyred. Well, hallelujah. The Word of God said there is no greater way to go than to be a martyr for Christ. That's what the Word of God says. Am I telling the truth? Oh, but we got people. Oh, no, we got to take up sword. We got to defend ourselves. We got to take up guns. We got to defend ourselves. Those who are preaching this message, folks, they're not bad apples, they're false prophets. Those who are preaching this today, they're not bad apples in the kingdom of God. They're false teachers. Those are not bad apples in the church of the living God. Those are false brethren. In Luke 9, chapter 52 through 56, I'm talking about the way of God not always being easy. But it requires we follow very specific and narrow guidelines. Luke 9, 52 through 56 and the Lord sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they, the Samaritans, did not receive him, because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? even as Elias did. But he, verse 55, speaking of Jesus, turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. Mm. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. You see, there's always a way to, to do things God's way. All they had to do was go to another village. <laughs> it was that simple. All right, so the Samaritans won't receive us. They don't want to put us up for the night because we're Jews and we're headed for Jerusalem. And there's a great amount of prejudice that goes both ways between the Samaritans and the Jews and the Jews and the Samaritans. But violence, calling down fire from heaven to destroy them, the Lord said, you don't even know what manner of spirit you're of. Yet this is the spirit that we see operating in how many preachers today, big name preachers, popular preachers, well-known preachers, world-renowned preachers, preachers with followings in the millions. Am I telling the truth today, folks? Yep, yep. Romans 12 17 through 21, and I'm going to read this to you today in the English Standard Version because the King James is a, it reads a little difficult for folks to understand. The English Standard Version said, Repay no one evil for evil, no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all, if possible. So far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing, for by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Is this what we see being preached in the evangelical and 
fundamentalist churches of America today, folks. Mm -mm. This is the straight and narrow path that Jesus talked about. It's not easy to repay somebody good for evil. It's not easy to turn the other cheek. It's not easy to do some of the things the Lord asks us to do. But that's why it's called the straight and narrow way. It's much easier to do it other ways, but the only problem is those ways qualify as the wide and broad way. Hello now. And where does that path lead? It doesn't lead to the same place. But we've got more preachers in America in the fundamentalists and evangelical camps who are preaching the wide and the broad way that leadeth unto destruction. And those preachers are not bad apples, folks. Those people are false prophets. Those people are false teachers. Those people are false brethren. It's important to understand this. Why? Because when you run around as a Christian defending these people as bad apples in the kingdom of God, you are owning them as part of the Christian church. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. And what are you telling the unsaved? What are you telling the lost? What are you telling the world? When you own these people, when you try to include them as part of the true church of the living God, what are you telling people when you try to include them? And you just label them, well, they're just a bad apple. You know, every bucket of apples has a bad apple. Not if the guy picking them knows what he's looking at. That's right. Hello now. I know a good apple from a bad apple. I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm plucking apples off a tree, I ain't going to pluck no apple with a worm in it. I'm not going to pluck a half rotten apple. Hello now. No. By their fruit you shall know them. If they're a bad apple, then they're not part of God's kingdom. If they're a, part, if they're a bad apple, then they are not part of the kingdom of God. And you put the church in a bad place when you try to own them on behalf of the church. And you understand what I'm telling you today? Yes. This is an important message, folks. If more Christians would grow some... Mm. Backbone. Call it what you want. <laughs> if more Christians would grow some apples <laughs> and would speak the truth and say... These people are false prophets. Franklin Graham is a false prophet. Kenneth Copeland is a false prophet. Let's say it straight out. These nuts that I quoted to you today from all these articles we find online, these preachers, Rick Joyner and others and Jim Baker are false prophets. Do not own them as part of the church. They're not part of the church. My God, their message is nothing akin to the message of God's Word. They are not by any stretch of the imagination representing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ or the God of the Christian church. Am I telling the truth today? Yes, yes. You can get as upset with me as you want to today. I don't really care. There's a reason God's having me share this today, folks. Matthew 5, 38 through 47. Again, God's way is not always easy. It is straight and narrow. You have heard it. Excuse me. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil. What? You don't go out, Lord, and buy guns? And you don't go out and create militias in order to defend yourself for a coming civil war? No. You resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek... Turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, <coughs> let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee. And from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. 
Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Oh, we've got Christians in America crying, we're being persecuted, we're being persecuted, we're being persecuted. Bless God, we're going to take up arms. We're going to create militias. We're going to engage in the second civil war. Is that God's way or is that the broad way that leads to destruction? It's not God's way. It's not the straight and narrow way. He said, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. Well, what does that tell you? If you don't do things that way, then you're not the children of your Father which is in heaven. There's no such thing as the bad apple in the kingdom of God. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, which means mature or complete, even as your Father which is in heaven is Perfect. I've got to close this up as quickly as I can. Matthew 10, 21 through 28. This is a prophecy the Lord gave concerning the end times. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. And the father, the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men's all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, create militias and take up arms to defend yourself. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. Don't let me put words in your mouth. That is not what it says in Matthew 10. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another for verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. See, I, I'm not hearing the same message I hear out of Rick Joyner. I'm not hearing the same message that I hear out of Jim Baker. I'm not hearing the same message that I'm hearing from Franklin Graham. Well, that must make them bad apples in the kingdom of Noma. There are no bad apples in the kingdom. Luke 6, 27, I've got one lengthy passage and I'll be done. But I say unto you, Luke 6, 27 through 46, But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. 
Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love them that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful, and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. And he spake a parable unto them, Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but every one that is perfect or mature or complete shall be as his master. You see, our objective is not to be better than Jesus. Our objective is to be like Jesus. Am I telling the truth Amen. today? And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the moat that is in thy brother's eye. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. Now he's just given us a bunch of teachings. He's just given us a bunch of, here's the way I want you to do things, right? And he begins now saying, a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. Neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his fruit. Well, gee, that's funny. I, I, I've heard preachers on television that sound angry, malicious, hateful. Am I telling the truth? Have you ever oh, yeah. listened to a preacher and heard those sounds coming in their words. Have you ever heard a preacher preach and you're saying, good Lord, I'm not hearing love. I'm not hearing patience. I'm not hearing joy. I'm not hearing peace. Am I telling the truth? Oh yeah. For every tree is known by its own fruit. There's one preacher on TV that I think if you listen to the tenor of his message, he's one of the most hateful, malicious men I've ever seen in my life and his name is Rod Parsley. You listen to him, get up and preach. I'm going to tell you right now, most, most of what comes out of his mouth has got such a negative, terrible connotation to it, it's not even funny. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man, listen, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. So if what you're hearing coming out of them ain't good, guess what that tells you? It means the heart ain't good. Guess what that tells you? They're not a bad apple. 
They're a false prophet. They're a false teacher. They're false brethren. They are not part of God's true church. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of, excuse me, for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Lastly, the Lord said in Luke 6, 46, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? 2 Corinthians eleven twenty six and Galatians 2 and 4, Paul speaks in both of these passages of false brethren. Many in the church today have bought into the satanic lie that Christians are not to call out false brethren. Men and women who act as though they are in the church, and yet in fact they are evil to the core. Their conduct betrays them. Their fruit betrays them. They advise and teach believers to do exactly opposite all that the Lord taught and commanded. They are wolves in sheep's clothing and preachers who are trying to be gentle and kind are allowing them to go unchecked because they fail to rise to their biblical spiritual responsibility and call them out for what they are. There are no bad apples in the kingdom of God. Barrett.